graphs, so whatever. <laughs> uh, so we are fault tolerant, sorry. Uh, so the question is, okay, but uh, of course you have told us that MapReduce is not very cool for, uh, can be not very cool for graph algorithms, but and then you tell us that it's a MapReduce job and it's fast. So where is the trick? The trick is that uh, Fregolet is, Fregolet or Giraffe in this case, it in particular is a single job. So we are avoiding this, <coughs> this iterative MapReduce job and it's a map only job. Meaning that there is no reducer, meaning that there is no communication between mapper and reducer, and meaning that there is no sorting of the things that I said we are avoiding. So we just basically Pregel is, is, is implemented in Giraffe as a particular mapper. And you write your computation on Giraffe just by implementing this class, and the rest comes under the hood. So I've been very fast, actually. Uh, this is a typical Hadoop cluster. We have our zookeeper uh, node with job tracker and name node, and uh, a set of four, um, four, four, four slaves. Each of them is running a task tracker with um, two mapper slots. Um, so each of our mappers will be a worker, and one of, the, yeah, one of them will be also a master in a separate thread. Um, so let's have a look at basically what they do. It's I think it's so it, it's it's so simple that it can be if what a what a worker does it can be described by a simple pseudo code that nobody wants to read at this at this at this time of the morning. But we want we basically have an outer loop through the whole number of super stuff we want to compute, and inside of the out, outer loop we have an inner loop where we are just iterating through the vertices assigned to us, and we call the compute method. And you can see it, it's it's the map of the mapper class. Uh, there is no reading from HDFS automatically. We we read from the disk by calling the explicit HDFS API, we assign the vertices, so we are basically avoiding, ignoring these uh, parameters from the map method. But all the rest is coming just, I mean, if you read the code, it's just like this. And of course, at the end of the super step, we're sending exchanging messages to Hadoop RPC, checkpointing to HDFS, and wait for the synchronization barrier. And yeah, of course, we dump the results at the end according to your format. Um, we have Zookeeper, just like everybody, for well, just like the others, for mapping workers to <coughs> versus to workers. We we are saving our Zookeeper uh, global data body computation, such as the first step, the number of procedures that we are in, uh, where we are checkpointing uh, data on HDFS, so the paths, uh, the values, the current values of all of our aggregators, statistics about the graphs, so the number of edges, number of vertices. A number of messages being exchanged. So the fact that we have a zookeeper using for this is that we have fault tolerance of our computation coming for free. We can, when, when we realize there is fault tolerance, we have all our state uh, fault tolerant, of course, and reliable on our zookeeper cluster, uh, which we will run actually a detail about this. If you have your zookeeper cluster in your Hadoop cluster, you can use that. If other, otherwise, we will start a zookeeper under the hood just automatically. Uh, this is basically the duties for the master. It's not running any computational vertices. It's just assigning uh, vertices to, to to workers. It, it's coordinating the synchronization, so it's uh, signaling the beginning of the super step. And it's according to the user defined parameter. It's requesting checkpoints to the workers and computing, of course, uh, the aggregator values coming from the workers. Uh, this is it. It's very simple. You can use a map reduce, basically, you can, you can use it basically with Giraffe as a map reduce job on your cluster. And this is uh, how checkpoint reading works. Uh, checkpointing happens at the user defined interval. So you can define to turn it off completely. You can, you can define to checkpoint your, uh, your graph at every super step, at every two super step, or whatever you want. This allows you to avoid hitting the, the disk so often as your check as your uh, super step are often very very short and quick. Checkpointing means that uh, the workers are splitting to disk what they have in memory. So basically all the values associated with vertices, all the <coughs> messages being produced uh, that they are during the current super step and, and that's basically it. So we have in yellow uh, this is the case 
where we are checkpointing every two super steps. I think that's how you say it in, in English. So for S2 and S4, super step two and super step four. So we're start, we're running our computation, and when we get to super step number two, we are checkpointing, but the computation goes on until we reach super step number four, during which a fault happens. So I don't know, mapper dies because for some kind of reason, and um, the master realizes that and a request to do all the timeout happens and requires and requests the, the workers to, to go back to the latest valid checkpoint, which is number two. The whole state for the current for checkpoint number two is restored to the, to the workers and the computation can start back from that particular superstar. And hopefully we will go and uh, we'll go after the superstar number four reaching the end. Um, the idea is that as we said as the, the computations on, on graph algorithm are usually were, were usually very quick on, on each iteration on MapReduce, it was a, a big cost to have all this I/O, and it's it's currently <coughs> very effective to to define uh, intervals bigger than as each super super step for performance reasons. Um, I often use no checkpointing at all. So this is basically. Uh, what what um, what is what GRP is about? We are uh, in the current process of releasing the first official release 0 0.1 uh, under the umbrella of uh, Apache incubation. Actually, it should happen this weekend. We are working on the extension of the regular model by allowing uh, out of core <coughs> messages. One of the biggest problems with uh, with, with Giraffe and Regal is that. Okay, it's very fast. We have we're having everything in memory. You can you can you can usually keep your whole graph in memory very easily uh, if you have a big cluster. But you're producing a lot of messages. You usually at such a super step, you produce um, the order of magnitude is basically the same number of edges you have in the graph. So you are producing you are keeping in memory along with the graph a big number of messages. And this happens if you don't have a lot of memory. It can happen. I mean, half of the problems we hear on the mailing list is that people are often often complaining about, you know, uh, mappers running out of memory. I mean, it's a typical problem with Java as well, but oh, okay. So we're basically trying to extend it to allow uh, the workers to automatically spill to disk the excessive messages that exhaust uh, the heap. It would be, a, I think, a cool extension. We are providing right now very, somehow to answer to the question, uh, a little set of uh, algorithm, typical algorithms. So we are, you, you can use page rank, single source shortest path can compute the uh, components of the graph and uh, there is a, there was an external contribution also for partitioning but we would like to uh, to provide along with uh, Bregel also a set of typical algorithms that can be used without touching code and in particular we would also like to, um, to provide different ways of loading and unloading a graph not just HDFS but maybe one of, one of the ideas is HP, HBase or HCatalog anyway. Depends on what people need. And for this reason, we are looking, of course, for more contributors. And, and that's basically it. This is a uh, few pointers to the uh, project. So this is the homepage. Uh, we have, of course, Jira. We have at least around 150 issues being worked on. Some closed, some still open. So come and visit us there. And this is a few pointers you want to contact, we have a mailing list, and this is my pointers, and I'm open for questions right now or later offline. <laughs> any questions? Yes. Do you use any particular message passing framework for the underlying? No. Uh, well, currently we started with Hadoop RPC, just like the others. Uh, the other two. Uh, we are experimenting with a different library. I think it's called NetKey. NetKey, <coughs> Yes. Uh, we it should be faster, but we haven't still stick to a new library for that. Um, this, yeah, I think that uh, yes, sorry. So the natural uh, you mentioned it becomes the bottleneck. Network because uh, you, our job is sending a lot of messages. Yes, exactly. Uh, so in your experiment, how large is the? So I mean, after the mach uh, number of number of machines uh, increases and 
the bottleneck is uh, getting more worse. So in your experiment, how large is the cluster and uh, does network become the bottleneck? Uh, the network is definitely the most expensive media in this computation. Uh, that's why we would just want to send messages uh, and that's why for in that's why it's the partitioning in particular makes a difference for computation in, uh, in, 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 in Giraffe. That's why you would use for PageRank, for example, something like range, range partitioning, where, I mean, according to PageRank, you're sending your PageRank along your, your links, and you have often very many links inside of your domain. That's how you partition it also for PageRank. Uh, so one thing I would, I would answer, I would mention for answering to you is um, one, one way of uh, minimizing the bottleneck of network is choosing uh, smartly your partitioning. Topology partitioning, which is not implemented out of the box, may increase uh, performance a lot. Uh, if you want to have uh, particular numbers, I can tell you that uh, currently this giraffe has been run by you know, on Facebook data, for example, on uh, I think 10, million, 10 billion vertices. No, 100, sorry, a few, uh, a few thousand, uh, tens of million of vertices and 400 workers. So 400 workers is the current uh, that I know size of the cluster. I don't know how to mention how good, uh, how, how, how much the bottleneck was in network because I don't know the index you want, but you can answer later. Yeah, so much more question goes into the same direction. Because I think if you can keep your message passing locally in, in one worker, then it would be much cheaper than doing remote message passing. Definitely. So the initial graph partitioning is definitely a very important part. Probably even more important than for a plain MapReduce job. Well, for more, probably it depends. If there, if for more producing graph algorithms, it will be the same. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it's a very, very uh, interesting thing to do uh, smart topology partitioning. Yeah. But I mean, I think we will hear about it often in this graph dev room. This is one of the biggest issues with this. Also, it's one of the problems I, as, I, as I personally see it for, for, the, for the reason why it's difficult to find even a distributed graph uh, database, right? How do you do that? It's, yeah. an, it's an actually, a matter of fact, it's an empty problem, so uh, it's a tough problem. We are actually working with one, one of my contributions. The contribution is going to be in this direction, so we're trying to initially follow uh, Partitioning the graph topolo topologically and see to minimize and take it for this reason how, how, how the impact will be. We haven't tried it yet, so I cannot talk about numbers. But uh, yes, that would be the idea. Okay. On the impact, one of the first slides you have shown the entire report with original computation and everything. You can do this. Yes, <coughs> I, I, have understood, I haven't understood exactly what slide you are mentioning. It's one that you have some new parts and then you have Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yeah. And two with very many work, so you need a balance, not just for the messages. No, no, that's true. You, you can win a 20% of performance just balancing better graphs. Yes. And that's the other point, the sending of messages. Because in some point to write the 10 disk is the same as sending messages but twice, one to the server and another to the computer. And if you don't have the data in the same node, then yeah. You always have to miss data because no are stored as as I, as I they are stored. So yes. you, you have tried to think sending notes from instead of sending just the information, the message sending also the note because you have detected the this. This note is sending a lot of messages yeah. to this computation node. So yeah. I send messages on the note and it will be ready. This, yeah, but the idea is first very, very close to topological partition because you're saying you, you are basically defining right now the concept of closeness of clustering, right? I send you messages, so maybe we are close to each other, and we should be stored in the same partition. It's something close to the idea of partition. But, but it depends on the computation and not from the data. It's a difference because 
because you can decide this one I should see if I don't want to follow this. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know. And that's true. It will be dynamic. That's the that idea. We, 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 as an API, we have, uh, we have a means. We, a giraffe, we are every superstar. The worker can ask the worker, uh, the master can ask the worker to split mm -hmm. and exchange vertices for load, for load balancing. So we are supporting that. At the moment, the algorithm is not so smart. Mm -hmm. As a, as, a, as a second answer to your question, is this is a typical map reduce problem, the outliers problem. Uh, Pregel Pre at its level, it has a global synchronization barrier, which is exactly the problem. Uh, there are expansions, for example, HIPG, it's another paper uh, last year, I think, by, uh, and is extending the Pregel model by defining fine grained synchronization barriers. So you have more synchronization barriers on your graph, and vertices are assigned to different synchronization barriers. So that, you know, like success. exactly. So that's if, if you have a part, a part of the graph that is lazily slower, all the others, the, the busy part doesn't have to stick to that. Uh, more questions? Do we have time for questions? No, yeah, yeah. We have five minutes more. Five minutes more? Ah, I've been faster. So to, a, to answer, back to the question, one pointer can give to you. There has been one work, very interesting, uh, in November, they have, they have provided, uh, they have extended what the said. They have gone uh, with the paper, the paper, research, the paper by Daniel Abadi, and uh, he basically uh, builds a tool on top, let's say, of Hadoop. You know, on, on your, your notes, you have triple stores, and then you use Hadoop basically to, to run your query and to spread it across your notes, right? So, uh, what they, what they show, to summarize everything, is what they do is basically they implement the graph partitioning on Hadoop, and they show that compared to hash partitioning, which is what also we do, they, they show in the results that have a 1000x performance improvement just to do the fact that you are using a topological partitioning of your graph. So this is exactly the kind of improvement you would use if you minimize your network usage by topological partitioning. That's the numbers. Yeah, it's a good paper, but... I assume that you are sending the message as much possible. That's one of the changes we did very recently. We send them as they come. Uh, you know, of course, you know, we buffer them and we flush uh, after the top of 24 I think, messages or something like this. Okay. I, I don't know worker on a worker basis. So, yes. That's that's basically how we do that. That's the yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Flavio.